everyone, Christy Rice here. I'm with you today to do something a little fun and different. As you will see, I'm laying down actual live plant, which is a little strange, I realize, but I'm going to share um, my technique for my watercolor fragment series, which I'm sure you've seen if you follow me on Instagram. And so let's just dive right in. And later on, I will explain a little bit more about what water, watercolor fragments is. Later on, I will explain a little bit more about what watercolor fragments actually is, um, what it's all about, what it means, and so on. But let's get started here. You may have seen me there just lay down some clean water. And guys, this time the water was actually clean, unlike many other times where I paint with you. Um, but the point is lay down almost clean water, slightly clean water, mostly clean water, whatever you want to do. Um, just lay down water without too much color in it. And you're laying it down in a way, this time around I'm creating a strawberry, lay down the color in a way that is very reminiscent of the strawberry shape I'm trying to create. Um, so then when you add the color, like I've dotted in here, I am using the Princeton Neptune brush round number eight to start. I'm going to be switching brushes though. And I'm just dabbing in color. Um, again, in my typical fashion, I'm not going to share with you the exact colors I'm using. I will say though, however, I'm using the Schmincke palette that I've used in past demos. So if you want to pull that up, I will put the link in um, to demos where I've actually shown the palette that I'm using in this one. So adding in some leaves. And as you saw there, I created about six little brush strokes at an angle. I started with the tip of my brush and then I pressed down and then released. And I did that over and over in descending size. I would recommend watching that again, rewind, slow it down. Um, but it's a good technique to have, especially for a leaf that's a uh, side view leaf. Here I'm going into another small strawberry. This time around, I didn't put down too much clean water first, a little bit, and then I'm adding in the, the red color. This is just a bright red, I'd, I'd say a cadmium red, or just your brightest red on that Artist Loft palette. So let me explain a little bit about watercolor fragments. Basically what I started doing, because I love my garden so much, as you know, I wrote a collection of books called Christie's Cutting Garden, for goodness sake. So clearly I love flowers and fruits and vegetables and everything that grows outside. I'm not the best at growing them, but I try with the very generous help of my dad. Anyway, it seems to be wherever I am, I'm drawn to flowers. Um, which leads me to some really questionable foraging techniques like in Scotland recently where I carried a bucket around in our rental car and I was snipping flowers from the side of the road everywhere we went, sometimes in front of restaurants, which I don't think was really a good idea. But anyway, I have this love of snipping flowers, little bits and pieces that inspire me. And what I started to do was lay them down onto watercolor paper and imagine creating kind of a composition that was part real flower, real fruit, whatever you want to call it, and part painted flower, fruit, vegetable. So that's really what watercolor fragments is. You can go ahead and check out the hashtag. It's just watercolor fragments, plural, on Instagram and see some of the work that I've done over the summer and spring. So really that's what I'm showing you here. And the thing I love most about watercolor fragments is this. It forces you to be immediate. It forces you to not fall so in love with your painting and be so invested in your painting that you can't enjoy the process. And the reason is this, because when you're done, part of your painting dies it goes away, it goes back to the ground, so to speak. And you are left with a very partial painting. So keep that in mind, this process is super fun and super liberating for that fact. This next technique here that I'm working on with the strawberries, I wanna show you close up. It is a dry brush technique. And I wanna show you here what too much water for this technique looks like right there you go so I'm gonna blot my brush and now I want to show you what too much color looks like for this particular technique there you go it's a nice dry texture but there's just too much color on my brush 
So I'm gonna blot a little color off with water and then blot the moisture off with a paper towel. I'm gonna go in, notice I'm going into the well of that um, watercolor and there we have it. There's the perfect amount. So there's your dry brush technique, um, close up and personal. And now we'll go ahead and use it on the actual strawberry. Keep in mind the strawberry at this point is slightly damp, but I'm using the tip of my dagger brush, which you've noticed I changed over to um, the Royal and Lang Nickel, my favorite, favorite brush in the world. I'm using the tip and some medium pressure to get a thicker line with that dry brush technique, the perfect amount of color and water, and it just gives a really soft effect on a slightly damp paper. Now, if your paper is more wet, it's going to bleed out and not be quite as contrasty, um, not quite as bright, but it'll still look really cool. Rinse my brush, going back in with some greens. I'm using a really pretty emerald green, a little bit of yellow here, not mixed together necessarily, just different points on the brush, um, and a little bit of olive. And I'm just getting a nice variety of greens. Zooming in here, working on a little teeny tiny strawberry bud, or I don't know what you call it, strawberry bud, a bloom, I don't know, whatever. It's a teeny tiny baby strawberry. Um, I have this cute little pot on my back patio and I bought just a cheap little pot of strawberries at Lowe's this summer and I finally got some strawberries. So you can imagine my excitement when I was able to pick these tiny little half inch strawberries. So, and yes, if you're wondering, I'm imagining larger, more beautiful, juicy strawberries, which I have been painting here currently. So use your imagination, folks. It's really, um, it's really it behooves you to use your imagination, especially when you get microscopic strawberries instead of big, lovely, juicy ones. So paint the big, lovely, juicy ones too. Continuing on here, you'll notice I'm using the side of my brush the broad side, the thin side, the short side, the long side, all at different times within even just a minute of painting. So be very conscious of that right there. Use just the tip, press down, lift it up. Just the tip right there. Tip again for very thin lines. Tip, little bit of pressure. So just keep in mind, if you're using some kind of dagger brush, it doesn't have to be this one. However, I'd recommend it at $4 a pop. You can't beat it. Um, but just keep very um, cognizant of how you're using that brush. I've referred back to the tutorial I did a while ago with getting the most out of one brush and I will send you back to that again and again and again. If at any point in your painting, like here I'm adding in the veins and to leaves, if you're just feeling like you're not making marks that you're happy with, stop on your main painting, stop, 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 and go onto a practice sheet and just do a little bit of exercise with your brush and come back to your painting, you'll feel that much better. Now keep in mind, we're doing watercolor fragments here. So I'm always thinking about where next I'm going to want to place my real flowers or my real fruit. Notice I haven't brought them into the frame of view here yet, but I am thinking about it. I'm thinking about, okay, that little strawberry, that real one in the upper right corner there, I'm probably gonna pull that down and place it kind of sprouting out from the big strawberry I've painted. So be thinking things like that. And you're probably wondering at this point, Christy, seriously, what is the point if I'm just going to have this beautiful painting that I've created and fallen in love with, and then my stuff's gonna die and I'm gonna be sad. So the point is you do have a little bit of redemption in this process in that you can take a photo of what you've done. So when you're done with your painting and you love it very, very carefully, and I would recommend sliding something rigid underneath your painting surface so that when you carry it outside into natural light where you should be photographing anything and everything, natural light only, not indoors, that it doesn't fly away or flop out of your hands or whatever, whatever could happen. So anyway, you take a picture, top down, go into the shade, not in direct sunlight, top down, beautiful shot on your iPhone or whatever source you have. Take a bunch of shots close up, far away, take a bunch and there you have it. You've memorialized your beautiful little half real, half fake painting forever and ever, amen. So. All right, continuing on, I've pulled that real strawberry down and put it where I was thinking. <clears throat> I love adding painted shadows to my watercolor fragments. 
compositions. It just tricks the eye. As you guys know, I'm not a super realistic painter, not one bit, uh, but I do love tricking the eye a little bit, especially with this series. Um, it can just be really fun to add in shadows there. Just kind of follow the natural shadows that you see and paint over top of them. That's a great idea. Uh, if you're gonna add shadows to your painted strawberries, just kind of think about where the shadows are on other pieces and make your decisions according to the shadows that are happening naturally. Now, what color to use when you're mixing for shadows? Um, of course you can just water down black. I don't recommend it. I take a little bit of blue, a little bit of violet, a little bit of black, maybe a little bit of sepia or an umber and mix it all together, water it down a ton and it'll give you a really rich shadowy color. So black is a little flat for me. I don't use it a lot unless I'm trying to be super, super contrasty and graphic. So not a big fan of black. Anyway, <clears throat> nothing wrong with it. It's just not for me always. I'm going through with a very, very light hand and a dry brush and adding some of these strawberry stems. Here's the thing too, when you're painting, and this can apply with this type of project, watercolor fragments, it can be in your watercoloring books, it can just be doing whatever on what kind of paper you might have laying around. Vary your kinds of brush strokes, not only the thickness, not only the size or the direction, but vary the amount of water and color you have on your brush. And it's just going to create that much more of a dynamic painting for you. So for example, I didn't go back to those green stems I just made and fill them in when I didn't create them perfectly, perfectly strong with watercolor. I let them go because they created an interesting texture. So think about that. You're gonna have areas that are a little more dry brush and textural. You're gonna have areas like I'm working on now that's more wet and wet and things are all perfect and smooth and floating together. And you know, the, the um, difference between those two or three or four looks that you might have going on in your painting are totally fine and just add that much more interest to your composition. See, I promised I would start talking about composition more and I am holding true to my promise. Okay, enough of that. So I'm working on this strawberry and I'm basically adding in various shades of red from a very kind of orangey red at the start to a little bit more of a, an alizarin crimson, which in um, simple terms is like a burgundy. You can make a burgundy from just a bright red with a little bit of purple mixed in or even a little bit of a brown, raw umber, sepia, whatever you have on your palette. Remember, don't freak out because you don't have the same palette as me. It's not a big deal. It doesn't matter. Okay, so various shades of red. Now I'm going back to that main strawberry and that, believe it or not, is still a little bit damp, so I added a little bit more line quality in there on the edges. I will be showing you later in this video um, kind of the shading technique I used a lot in this particular composition. Um, so stay tuned for that. You may even wanna fast forward right now. Um, this would be a great spot to fast forward to, um, to the very end of this video, um, like the last, I would say, 10 minutes or so. And you could see that demo now if you'd like. You don't have to, it's not necessary, but you might have fun with that. As I've been chatting here, I've been playing around with my uh, my strawberries, some of them are barely, barely producing any fruit right now, which I actually love. Um, just using my hands, putting them on, you know, a particular surface within the painting, pulling them away, just playing around with the composition. At this stage with this um, project, I'm gonna call it a project, it's not a technique necessarily. Watercolor fragments really begs you to step back and look at what you're doing from a distance. I'm now going back in and adding some actual painted leaves now that I kind of like the composition I've created with the stems and buds here. Remember, this project, this style of painting, whatever you wanna call it, this isn't so much about the end result, although you will take a picture of it and you will post it on Instagram and you'll be super proud of it and that's your end result. But again, it'll die your painting's gonna die, remember it. This approach is so much more about the process. So much more about the process, honestly, than 
a lot of the painting I've done in my lifetime. And I think that's why I've so enjoyed this series and I have no plans of stopping it anytime soon. There's something so freeing with knowing that what you're working on has a time limit. It has a shelf life and you just need to be in the moment and enjoy it. Um, so I really encourage you, even if you're sitting there saying, well, that's silly. I don't want to be left with a partial painting once my flowers die. Just do it. I promise you. All right, going back in here, the strawberry here is now dry. I've been adding shades of red from really, really dark burgundy to a more sheer water-filled brush of red um, over top of my dry areas. Now, right there, I'm going in with that indigo I've used before with the very tip of my brush. I'm going back in now with just water on my brush and at the same time that I'm removing some of that indigo, I'm also smoothing it out into the other areas of the strawberry. It's a really beautiful way, a little bit of red there now next to it. This is a really beautiful way to create shading, to create definition, um, but be very careful not to do this all around the perimeter of your strawberry. Is perimeter the right word? I don't know, the edge of your strawberry. Don't do it around the whole edge because it'll look like a coloring book. And hey, you know I love coloring books, but that's not what we're doing here. So don't outline your strawberries, okay? Wonderful. So moving on, I put a little bit of white in that small middle strawberry, adding in some leaves here with a very sheer green. I have a lot of water on that brush at that point. Coming back in to define the edges, keep in mind as you're working to be very conscious of your brush, the pressure, and how you're holding your brush. Think about what shape you want to make. Think about what angle you want your little um, leaves to be at. So every time you're laying down strokes of color, you should be thinking about, for the most part, every time, you should be thinking about what you're doing, right? And I know that seems like a lot. I have to think about every single brush stroke. Are you kidding me? But yeah, I think you'll be happier for the end result if you're thinking about, okay, I really want this little leaf to turn up away from the strawberry. And this one right below it, I want it to kind of go out to the right and so on and so forth. It's not complicated, but it just keeps you in the moment and it keeps you focused on what you're doing. <clears throat> At the very bottom there, off the screen almost, I've added another strawberry, but I'm not going to get super detailed with that one at all. I made that decision as I was touching down color to the page. I decided, hey, I need a little bit of relief from this more detailed painting that I've been doing elsewhere on the page, comparatively speaking. I made that decision just to have a little bit of a rest, a visual break from the detail. So going in with that indigo again, I totally overdid it and that's okay. Go clean your brush and drag it back in with a clean, slightly damp brush, blot, do it again, and you've kind of saved yourself there. You no longer have a mess. Um, and bravely, I go back in with a little bit more of that indigo, remembering not to outline. Now, a little trick here, I do this a lot. I'll have some color on my brush from some shading I was doing. Instead of going back to the normal green I've been using, for the little leaves on the strawberry heads, I went ahead in with a dry brush of indigo and added some outline style leaves. Again, it just creates visual interest, keeps things from getting too boring. Going back up with the short edge of my dagger brush and the tip here to create some veins in that leaf. I want that leaf to be a little bit more of like a secondary focal point. Um, and I say that secondary focal point, not to freak you out and not to scare you and think like, oh gosh, I'm just getting the hang of a focal point and now she wants a secondary one. No, just the spot really that I want people's eye to go to at some point when they first look at my painting. I really like that leaf. I like the shape of it. I like where it's placed. So I'm going to put a little bit more detail into it. At the same time, I'm also thinking about my real leaves and my real strawberries and how they're fitting into all of this. When I'm working on watercolor fragments, I'm always thinking top down. How is this going to look top down? Are my real stems going to line up with my painted leaves from a top down angle? Um, so 
keep in mind where you're sitting and you're looking at your piece from the angle from where you're sitting, things may look like they're lined up, but you're probably going to need to stand up, stand over top of your composition to make sure everything when you snap that final picture for posterity is lining up as you'd like it to be on camera eventually. Just going to slow down here to show you using the short edge and some pressure on this dagger brush how to create some very stylized leaves. Again, I felt like my detail uh, leaves were getting a little bit too repetitive, so I wanted to add in some really stylized leaves here and some stems. And literally, it's a press, pull up kind of technique where you press down, press down, and then pull up to create the tip of the leaf. And then for those really small wispy stems that connect the leaves, literally just using the very tip of the dagger brush and very, very, very little pressure. And that's it. If you feel more comfortable uh, sketching out some of your areas before you start laying down paint, by all means do it. If you want to sketch out just a line here or there to kind of map out where you want your leaf sprays to go, what direction, what curvature, do it. Um, just really light sketches can be really helpful um, if you don't feel comfortable going right into paint on paper. Uh, I feel the need to kind of juice up the composition here a little bit, add a little bit more interest, so I'm going to add another strawberry. All right, same technique, a little bit of water on the page first. I'm making this strawberry look like it's still growing so it doesn't come to as much of a point. Again, don't be afraid, as you've learned in my recent demos, to use inspiration photos. I am not using one today, I'll be honest, but if you like that comfort, which I oftentimes do, don't be ashamed, um, go ahead on Google and print out some reference images. Um, so these two strawberries, same idea, same technique, different colors. Started with a yellow on this one on the bottom. <clears throat> and then I'm going ahead in with just the tip of my brush. First added some red along the edge. And now I'm adding some of that indigo along the edge. Very sparingly here. But just to create little, little nooks and crannies in that strawberry to give it some dimension. Um, and if I go overboard, I can go in with a clean, damp brush and kind of, whoop little too much indigo there and then pull that back away um, with a kind of lifting and blotting technique. All right, some red there to mask a little bit of that excessive indigo that I put on there and then I'm doing some um, strokes here to create shape. Notice how I'm laying these strokes down in a very particular way to suggest kind of that bulbous shape of a strawberry. Um, again, this is where a reference photo comes in real handy um, if you haven't painted a lot of strawberries in the past. Um, I have, so I'm kind of winging it, but again, using different shades of red, burgundy red, orangey red, and something in between. Now I'm going back to my first strawberry with a very deep burgundy red, and I'm using a lot of color saturation on the brush. I would say about 60% pigment, 40% water, and I've added some more detail, some more fill of that red, if you will. Notice too that I started to leave some of the lighter areas underneath a little bit, thinking ahead to the seeds of the strawberry. Um, don't worry too much about that though, because the technique I'm gonna show you today to make the seeds, you absolutely don't have to leave white spaces to get the seeds to show up. You can color that or paint, excuse me, paint that strawberry in completely red and with the technique that we'll be using to add the seeds, um, you can add them right in. So don't freak out too much if you haven't left any highlighted areas um, in your painting thus far, we'll get there. All right, I'm pretty happy with how things are moving along here. Um, adding in a very unripe strawberry. I just love that little guy. And I did go ahead and peel some of the, um, of the leaves off from the top of the strawberry um, just to reveal more of its shape. 
And when you're doing watercolor fragments, and I really hope you guys do, don't forget that you can kind of perform artistic surgery, shall we say, on some of these elements. Pull leaves apart, pull things apart, cut them in half so they lay flat on the paper better. Do what you need to do to make things work on the page. Because you'll start to notice it is hard to kind of wrangle these elements as you're moving your hand around the paper to paint. So if there's something you think you could do to that leaf or to that strawberry or to whatever it is to make it rest better on the page, by all means do it. Uh, this little plant that I plucked these from on my patio had the sweetest little pink buds and blooms throughout the summer. So I'm adding some of them in. Um, I'm really just using kind of a, a four and five petal technique um, with the short edge of my brush adding in just I'm using like an opera rose I think it's the Windsor and Newton opera rose that I squirted into my Schmenka palette um, when I first got it <clears throat> and a little bit of white um, and I know a lot of people are like white you're using white and watercolor why don't you use the white of the page and I actually really like what white does to saturated watercolor when you do a wet and wet with color and white. It creates a really cool texture. So I do that on purpose. A little bit more white here. This is something you might want to practice these little buds on a, another sheet of paper and how to get them to look like they're kind of curving up to the sky. Um, so you don't just look like you have little pinwheel flowers. So you might want to practice that on another sheet. And really all it is, is holding your brush at different angles as you make each petal and just trying not to make each petal look the same. You wanna make them look a little different, curve differently, angle differently. So definitely um, get onto a practice sheet and try that out if you're feeling a little nervous about adding that to your painting. I'm making the centers with the very tip of my dagger brush and a little bit of indigo, very, very light touch. And I'm going to leave them alone now because I'm really happy with how they're looking. This is a great point to just take a step back, have a look, how are you feeling? Right now I'm feeling like I need to add some more elements. Things look a little bit condensed, not quite as organic as I was hoping. The leaves on that right-hand side, those super stylized leaves on the right-hand side are creating like a weird line through my composition. Um, I hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna add some more leaves over here to kind of make things feel a little bit less rigid, a little more organic. So I did want to bring something up. <laughs> um, one of um, the followers of my channel on a recent video commented and said, and I paraphrase, they're like, Christy, I love watching your videos. Even when I don't know what the heck you're saying, I just love hearing your thoughts as you're painting. Um, and so I really love the comment. It was super sweet, but I did want to say, and it made me think, I do tend to kind of ramble on and I tend to go on and on. And I very much so want you to get an idea of what is in my head as I'm painting, but not to the point that you have no clue what I'm talking about. So saying that I would love for you to ask questions. Um, I don't want to produce a video because let me be honest, they take time, a lot of time. I want to produce them. Oh, and I'm not getting paid for them. So, but I don't care because I love, love making them for you. But I want to be making videos that you understand and that make sense and that resonate with you. So by all means, if I say something or do something on the regular that is like, what you need to tell me, don't be afraid to tell me. You can tell me publicly in a comment or email me. All right, I'm adding the strawberry seeds. And as you'll see here, as I zoom in, you could do these two ways. I took a little bit of pencil and made little tiny ovals, different angles to the ovals. Don't make them all going the same way. And then I took white watercolor, the very tip of my brush and filled in the ovals. So simple. Um, make sure that you know each area each seed doesn't have to look exactly the same you can have some of the pencil line more revealed than in others as i'm doing here you can go back in and kind of darken some of the pencil lines to create some depth um, but this is super super easy so like i said before don't worry too much if you don't leave 
lighter spots in your original watercolor layers because you can go back in and just do your white and your pencil over top to reveal the seeds. However, as you can see though, leaving some of those brighter, lighter, sun-kissed areas really adds to the dimension of your painting. So if you can restrain yourself to leave some of those light areas, by all means do that. Okay, moving on here, keep adding some definition with my pencil. Um, this is something I love to do, especially if you watch my work on Instagram, you'll see I do a lot of mixed media. I am not afraid to pull out a pencil randomly or a pen or whatever it may be. I just love layering different textures. So uh, it's super freeing and especially fun. Um, maybe fun's not the word, but if you're in a rut in your painting and you kind of just want to feel a little bit liberated from it, pulling out the pencil or a pen and just going at it, um, while it will completely change the direction of your painting, it can make you feel a whole lot better about life um, if you've kind of been in the doldrums about your painting. So adding in a bit more red here and see as I move along with the brush, just the tip, while I'm removing a lot of my lights, I am uh, maintaining little areas that look like seeds. So um, definitely, this part of the process can be a little scary, especially if you're happy with the rest of your painting. You can feel like, oh my gosh, the next move I make is gonna ruin it. Um, but it's a good thing to do to keep adding some of this detail. Um, I went in now with a darker red to soften things a bit and blend things a bit um, because some of my previous brush strokes you can see there are a little harsh. So I'm trying to soften things. Um, quite a bit. But remember, back to my point about being at a scary point in the painting, which often is that point where you're like, I really love what I'm doing and I don't want to mess it up. Um, but remember, as long as your page is still wet, you have a lot of opportunity to make changes. I'm going in here with a real bloom. This is a bloom from one of my succulents. Don't ask me what kind of succulent it is. I have no clue because I don't keep a record of what I have. But anyway, I pulled off some blooms and I thought how cute would that be to use those. And the thing I love about this, the minute I put them down on the paper, they immediately stopped looking real and looked more like intense watercolor, which I just really loved. Cause again, I love tricking the eye with this series. So moving on here, I promised you a very close up uh, look at the technique that I've been using for all the strawberries. I purposely am using kind of some dirty water here so you can see the outline of my strawberry that I'd be making with my uh, what is supposed to be completely clean water. So I am literally painting, let's call it clean water for all intents and purposes. I've painted with clean water in the shape of my strawberry. I didn't fill in with clean water everywhere within that shape going in now with the edge of my dagger and adding some red. It's just a nice medium red, about 50-50% water pigment on my brush. Going in with a little pink just for some oomph, a little bit of yellow for uh, uh, the appearance of sunshine. Um, now see what dirty water can do to a strawberry, um, but don't, it's not too bad, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, that is a little bit of that alizarin crimson mixed with a little bit of pink. Um, want to show you that dry brush. That's what that should be looking like when you go ahead and decide to apply it. Now the dry brush that I'm using here is on a strawberry that is more wet than the one in the previous part of this demo. And notice it gives a much more kind of blended look. Um, than the strawberry I was working on initially earlier in the video. Here is how I add in that indigo with the very tip of my brush, not making sure not to outline the entire strawberry, go in with a clean, damp brush and scoop or what I call lift some color out, blend things together. You will get the hang of this when you're lifting as to not go, quote, outside the lines that you've already created. It does take some practice. Going back in with some strong red, not necessarily a dry brush. As the strawberry is drying, uh, my color gets more saturated and bleeds less, so that's what you're noticing. Adding in the stem and some leaves here with a 
um, a push and lift technique for the leaves. Again, something great you can practice on a piece of scratch paper. And see that leaf there I created on the left? I don't plan on filling that in anymore. Uh, I just love how it looks so immediate and partially um, covered. And there are some brush strokes to sample out the different levels of, quote, dry brush that you can use um, when painting like this. Going in with that burgundy, a lizard and crimson, whatever you want to call it adding some touches of it. Again, I'm, I keep um, adding brush strokes in the direction of this strawberry shape. I keep following previous brush strokes that I've created here. Um, not perfectly overlapping them, but following their general angle. Adding a bit more of that indigo mixed with a little bit of purple. And this time I'm going to show you a different way of creating your seeds. I'm going into a slightly damp strawberry now with indigo mixed with purple dots of color. I'm going to kind of crisp up the edges of those dots with my pencil, add some just, uh, just pencil seeds as well. And this is just another way to get that beautiful strawberry look. Um, and you know, so you don't have to Always paint the seeds the same way every time. There's a bunch of different ways to approach this. Letting my strawberry dry, I'm using just the tip of my brush to add some accent to these little leaves and just being mindful of the areas that are super wet. So if I lay down some green in a super wet area, it's gonna bleed, bleed more than if it were in a dry area. So keep that in mind. These are all just things that I'm speaking out loud, but then I'm actually thinking as I paint. Want to just show you that stylized leaf technique again. Um, it's really just a matter of pressure. Starting off with just a very little pressure on your brush and then as you pull down, you put more pressure on and then lift up again to make the point. I'll do it again here for you. You can even wiggle the brush a little bit as you're pulling down to create um, a different shape leaf. Um, and then very, very little pressure to create the stems that connect these leaves. You can apply this technique. I've shown it to you before, but you can use this in so many different ways. Love it so much. And it's just a super cathartic practice. Um, if you don't really feel like getting too serious about your painting on any given day, you can paint leaves and call it done. All right, going back into the strawberry, it's had a chance to dry a little bit with my white. Make sure you've loaded up good. Now you're gonna see that bleeding. Um, this strawberry is still wet, but I'm okay with the amount of bleeding that's happening. Um, it will happen less uh, on the, the, it will happen less on the seeds that I outlined with pencil, as you'll notice. Um, that creates kind of a little bit of a barrier. Um, and look at that, there you have it. Sweet little strawberry, uh, very convincing, not super realistic, but um, really convincing. And here is a look at what for now I'm calling the finished piece. Uh, this has been just a joy to share with you and I hope you have a lot of fun trying your own. Please post them on Instagram and use the watercolor fragments hashtag. Until next time.